The F1 testing in Bahrain proved to be actually quite fruitful for Mercedes as the team improved heavily in comparison to the previous two years as it was echoed by Hamilton and Russell. And it does seem like the team has found what it's been looking for for the past two years. With this being the last season of the seven-time world champion in the Silver Arrows, the team will be looking to end it on a high. Despite Toto's statements that their main goal is not for the fight for the title. So can Mercedes beat their rivals this season and have they found something they can build upon? Mercedes may finally be on the verge of achieving something it's passionately pursued since the start of the new ground effect era in Formula One two years ago, based on the testing conducted in Bahrain. Over the past two years, the team has transitioned from being a contender for the 2021 title to struggling to emerge as the top competitor among a distant chasing pack behind Red Bull, managing just one Grand Prix victory during this period and around this time last year. The realisation dawned upon Mercedes that sticking to its 2022 concept for the 2023 season was a massive mistake. And because of that, the Brackley team spent the past 12 months pivoting towards a different conceptual direction. The W15 is a manifestation of this approach and initial assessments following three days of testing have been favourable, although it's unlikely to outperform Red Bull just yet. Andrew Shovlin, Mercedes trackside engineering director, expressed optimism about the progress made with the W15 compared to its predecessor, as he noted a marked improvement in driver feedback, indicating a more positive response, which is an encouraging sign. Shovlin further highlighted the team's concerted efforts to rectify handling issues that plagued the W14, which, to be honest, does signal a promising step forward. Looking at the statements from the team it's evident that they're more positive and if we forget about pace for a moment then the biggest worry still seems to be the back breaking out in several situations but Hamilton seems more at ease with this than Russell did and one might be wondering if that will come back to bite them in qualifying because if they can't get the front rows then life becomes more difficult again especially since Ferrari seems to have made some tyre preservation gains. One could argue that Hamilton being more comfortable with the apparently oversteering rear end is good news, assuming that his ability to feel the car is improved as a result of the cockpit position being changed, and this may imply that he'll be better able to balance the car on the edge in qualifying trim, which has been a relative weakness of the Mercedes cars. So if those assumptions prove true, Russell may face a somewhat harder challenge from Hamilton this season. We're still trying to fine-tune the setup. There will definitely be more to come, Shovlin said in a Mercedes social media debrief. Overall, we're happy. We definitely made progress. In terms of pace, the long run probably looks like our strength at the moment. There's more work to do on a single lap, but we should be in a position to hopefully put in a good showing when we get back on track. Ever since F1 moved to 2022's all-new regulations, Hamilton and Russell have struggled with the unpredictable and vicious behaviour of Mercedes cars. Consistent and compliant car handling therefore becomes a key priority for the W15 project and Mercedes' long-run prowess seems to back up Russell's comments that his car is no longer a diva. It's really encouraging that a lot of the problems that the drivers have been talking about the last 12 and even 24 months with W13 and W14 we seem to have got to grips with Shovlin added but what exactly is this new upgrade and could it help the team moving forward as we have already seen the drivers are satisfied and Shovlin says the team is overall happy but will that translate onto the track in the form of good results initially there was speculation that the practically based team's apparent installation of redundant suspension elements on their car was a tactical maneuver to mislead rivals during pre-season but such tactics are not allowed as teams are 
prohibited from incorporating unnecessary components into their cars. However, it has since been revealed that the image actually hinted at a new flexible arrangement integrated into the Mercedes chassis and front suspension for this season, and this innovation enables Mercedes to adjust the inboard end of the suspension leg to better suit the specific demands of each circuit's setup. While most teams have some degree of freedom in this area, typically involving adjustments in millimetres, Mercedes' solution with the W15 provides a significantly greater range of adjustment, spanning several centimetres as the hatch on the side of the W15's chassis is notably larger than usual, allowing for various wishbone configurations. Each configuration yields different kinematic and aerodynamic responses. During pre-season testing, Mercedes positioned the rear leg of the upper wishbone higher for the first two days, but then lowered it on the third day to assess its effectiveness. This adjustment changes the longitudinal position of the arm, moving it forward compared to its position in the earlier days of testing. On the third day, this arrangement brings the rear legs of the upper and lower wishbones into closer proximity, potentially enhancing their effectiveness as a combined aero dynamic surface and while this concept is not entirely brand new with teams previously exploring ways to couple these services for aerodynamic gains Mercedes implementation allows for greater adaptability an example of a team without such adaptability is McLaren's MP431 which maintained a static wishbone position throughout the season However, the significance of Mercedes' multiple mounting point arrangement extends a bit beyond just aerodynamic advantages. Another noteworthy aspect is its impact on anti-dive characteristics, which can vary depending on the chosen position. This feature could potentially give the German manufacturer an advantage at various circuits where competitors may be constrained or less optimal configurations. While the W15's design marks the first instance of such an arrangement being implemented by a team, Mercedes has a history of innovative suspension layouts and a recent example can be found in last season's Monaco Grand Prix where the team introduced a B-spec overall to the W14, incorporating a higher mounting point for the lead arm of the upper wishbone. However, while successful, these changes did leave behind some residual effects as the original mounting points remained intact thereafter and that also incurred a weight penalty a consequence that will likely be replicated with the W15. Mercedes' specific lap times during testing haven't been particularly impressive, with George and Russell's best effort falling just half a tenth short of Charles Leclerc's day three benchmark and trailing Carlos Sainz's fastest lap by four tenths. And consensus in the paddock suggests that Mercedes may have taken a slight step back from last year, potentially placing them at third fastest at best for the time being with the on-track performance has been a mixed bag with some runs appearing more troublesome than others. But despite these observations, the conclusion of this week's testing marked Mercedes' most positive evaluation of a pre-season test in this era of regulations. And this hints, amidst efforts to temper expectations, at the possibility that the team may be on the brink of a breakthrough that it's been seeking for the past two years. However, there's an inevitable caveat emphasising that Mercedes acknowledges the need for further performance gains. But this was to be expected, given the significant overhaul in car design. It would have been unreasonable to anticipate that Mercedes' first fully adapted car for this era would immediately match the level of a Red Bull, which has not only evolved from its dominant predecessor, but has also undergone extensive reworking and improvements. The Silver Arrow's previous shortcomings have led to the characterization of its car as spiteful, and hence it's heartening for the team that Andrew Shovlin believes the W15 addresses a number of those problems. 
but Shovlin and Russell have remarked that the team is in a notably better position compared to 12 months ago, with Lewis Hamilton expressing his satisfaction with a really good test and describing it as massively encouraging. However, he also acknowledges that there is still work to be done to reach their desired level. This apparent contradiction stems from the fact that Mercedes isn't solely evaluating the W15 based on pure performance and its initial standing in the pecking order. What do you think? Will the Silver Arrows pull off a great season to send off Hamilton to Ferrari? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video.